cheesy, creamy, baked gnocchi casserole. It's perfect for a potluck. It's great for an easy weeknight dinner. Hey, I'm Claire Tanzi. I'm the author of the cookbook, Uncomplicated. I believe that everybody can cook. And I'm here to share with you my favorite go-to recipes that are gonna make your cooking that much easier, more fun, and more delicious. Today, it's broccoli and cheddar gnocchi casserole. Comfort food at its absolute peak. So easy, it's on the table in less than an hour. The ingredients for this are really simple. I just use a packaged gnocchi. These are the ones that you just get at the store, off the shelf, they're not even refrigerated. And I get two packs, because I'm gonna make a lot. And you know what, you don't even have to boil them. Ah. I'm gonna make a simple cheese sauce, so that takes some butter, some onions, some cheese and spices. And then to get some vegetables in there, we're gonna add a bit of broccoli. It's all done in one pot and it couldn't be easier. To start this recipe, I'm gonna make a really simple cheese sauce. So I've got my biggest pot here on the stove and over about medium low heat, I'm going to melt a third of a cup of butter. I know that sounds like a lot, but this is gonna serve 10 people, so don't worry about it. Mmm, buttery. And I've got some onion kind of finely chopped, just one little small onion. And as soon as the butter melts, I'm gonna pop the onion in there and just get it cooking sort of slowly so that it gets translucent and lovely and fragrant. I'm using my biggest pot here because ultimately this entire recipe has to fit in the pot. And I've done it before where I used too small of a pot and then I just have to clean two pots and that doesn't make me happy. The next step whenever you're making a cheese sauce is getting the flour incorporated into the melting butter and those nice soft onions. And for this one, it's an equal amount of flour to the butter. So it was a third of a cup of butter so it's a third of a cup of flour. And what I'm gonna do is sprinkle it nicely and evenly and then right away stir it in so that it doesn't form any lumps. I'm gonna add a few herbs and spices to this as well. I like dried mustard in a cheese sauce. It seems to really, I don't know, zest up the flavor of the cheese and I'm all for zesting up the flavor of the cheese. So this is just dry mustard powder uh, and I'm gonna use about a teaspoon of that. And then I'm gonna add some thyme. So thyme is one of my favorite dried herbs, one of my only favorite dried herbs. Um, and it's really nice with cheese as well and it gives this just a nice little bit of dimension. So about a half a teaspoon of dried thyme. And the other thing that can really zest up the flavor of a cheese sauce is a little bit of cayenne. Not too much. You don't want this to be spicy. You just want to give it a little bit of a sexy tickle. Now I've got the heat down pretty low and I'm going to add the milk nice and slow again so that I don't create any lumps. Just add a little and stir. And a little more, and stir. If you take your time adding the milk, you're going to make sure you don't have any lumps in that sauce. Okay, final addition of milk. And what's happening now is the flour and the butter are mixing up with the milk and thickening it. So that is really how you make a nice thick sauce. And of course it doesn't even have the cheese in it yet. Okay, now while that's heating up really slowly over low heat, I'm gonna prepare the broccoli. I kinda want this broccoli just to be small don't want it to be in giant florets. So the way I do that, a bit unconventional, cut that broccoli in half, cut it down the middle, and then just sort of mince it up. And the closer you get to the top, the weirder it gets because then you start cutting right into the florets. Some are bigger, some are little, that's just right. I don't want anything too big. I would say, mm, this guy's too big. Now that the white sauce is starting to thicken up, I'm gonna add some cheese. 
I use um, a nice old cheddar. I've got about three cups here and I want to save one cup for the top. So try to remember that while you're adding the cheese. Don't add it all. You don't have to be too careful with it, but just make sure that you don't add it all. Stir that in and it will melt up nicely. Oh, things are starting to look really good here. Now that the cheese is melted, it's time to add the gnocchi. And I love this recipe because you do not have to pre-cook the gnocchi. You just add the gnocchi right into the sauce and then they essentially cook in the oven. So, so I'm gonna do two packs and I'm just gonna plop them right in. Sometimes they, they can kind of clump up in these packages, just break that up, shouldn't be too difficult. And now for that broccoli, also doesn't have to be pre-cooked, yay! You don't want the broccoli to get overcooked, of course, and that's why you don't even have to cook it first. Give that a big stir, turn off the heat. Oh. And now I'm gonna pour this whole thing into a big casserole dish, top it with the rest of the cheese and pop it in the oven. Now because that gnocchi isn't cooked, I'm going to start it in the oven covered with tin foil. And that'll kind of allow the gnocchi to cook and get nice and tender. Then I'll pull off the tin foil, add the rest of the cheese, and it'll get golden and toasty. The gnocchi's been in for a little over half an hour. <laughs> Smells incredible. So now I'm just gonna add that reserved bit of cheese and let the cheese melt. I'm actually gonna turn the broiler on for a few minutes just to get it gorgeous and golden. Look at that sizzling, golden, whoo! I wouldn't say no to a big old bowl of this for dinner. You know what, it's great for dinner. It's great to take to a potluck. This is often so nice to have some meat-free recipes close at hand. Look at that. There it is, cheesy, baked, gnocchi mac and cheese, an absolute pure comfort dish. For the full recipe, click on the link below. And please subscribe and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss any of the great videos that are coming up. And for some other great meat-free recipes, check out these videos here. Remember, life is complicated. Cooking shouldn't be. Happy cooking. Mm.